questions 40 to 43 in the Ace of Red paper. Um, so for starters, I think this is one of the toughest set of questions in the Ace of Practice papers. Um, so don't feel too disheartened or discouraged if you're not really getting it the first time around. Um, right, so basically uh, we were given this diagram um, and a whole chunk of information instead of explaining how it works. Um, and then in question 40, um, they've asked us for the speed of an ion passing through slit S3. All right. Um, so prior to sort of uh, even like having a look at this question, you kind of need to know a little bit of assumed, uh, there's like a little bit of assumed knowledge. You kind of need to know a couple of things. Um, and that's mostly to do with um, how a charged particle moves in a magnetic and electric field. Um, so if you if you're not familiar with that concept, um, I would suggest reading up on it um, because otherwise this will all be very confusing and you won't really get some of the logical steps um, that you need to get to answer the question. Um, so question 40, you can't really answer it without sort of understanding what's going on here. Um, so I'll just kind of tr quickly try and explain it. Um, so we've basically got this whole apparatus. We've got um, some sort of like iron beam discharge device and it's just shooting out um, iron beams, uh, sorry, ions. Um, and uh, they're sort of passing through this plate and then curving around and hitting um, this photographic plate over here. Um, the stem has given us a little bit of information. Firstly, the iron beam is made up of positive ions. Um, so positive charged particles are making up the ion beam. Um, secondly, uh, that the iron beam passes through the plates M and N undeflected, okay? And thirdly, that there is a magnetic field and electric field between the plates M and N. All right, so if, you're, if you've done like sort of a little bit of background reading on electric fields and magnetic fields, you'll know that um, if there's an electric field and a charged particle is moving through it, um, that charged particle is going to be deflected in the direction of the... Uh, in the direction of the electric field if it's a positive particle. But we've been told that the um, particle is passing through undeflected. Um, so how can that happen? How can um, a charged particle pass through undeflected? Well, that's because um, there must be an opposing force to the electric field. Um, so a force of equal magnitude, but in the opposite direction to the electric field. And in this case, that is the magnetic field. And they've told us that there is a magnetic field um, running perpendicular to the um, plane of the plates. So basically, from that, we can therefore say that the um, force of the electric field, so Fe for electric, um, is equal to the force of the magnetic field. <clears throat> uh, force of the magnetic field, the B field. So, um, since we know this fact is true, we can actually just um, substitute in the formulas that we've been given. Um, so the uh, electric field formula is QE and the um, B field formula is QVB. All right, so um, from there, you just sort of cancel out the Qs um, and we're finding the speed, so V is equal to E on B, specifically, I believe B1, because that's the, um, that refers to the magnetic field in between the plates, whilst B2 refers to the, um, refers to the magnetic field um, in this area. All right, so we have V is equal to E on B1, um, and that corresponds to the answer of B. <clears throat> So just as an aside, I thought I'd sort of explain how we get um, each of these respective forces. Um, because if uh, you're sort of a bit unfamiliar with the electric field force, um, then you kind of wonder like, why why does it sort of result in a left-sided force um, when the electric field is perpendicular, whilst the E field results in a right-sided force, even though it's horizontal, like, Sort of, it's very all well confusing, but um, I'll just quickly go through it. Um, so the E field, um, the E field exerts a force in the direction of the E field. So um, if you don't bit a background reading, you'll know that the E field goes from the positive to the negative side. And if we have a positively charged particle, it's going to be repelled by the 
positive side and attracted by the negative. So overall, for a positively charged particle, we have a right-sided force due to the E field. The B field, on the other hand, exerts a uh, force in sort of a weirder sort of direction. So um, the stem tells us that the B field is coming, uh, sorry, the B field is in a direction that is perpendicular to the plane represented um, by the diagram. So basically, we've got a B field that is coming either out of the page or into the page. Right. Um, so uh, let's just assume that the B field is coming out of the page as indicated by this symbol. Um, to indicate, if you're unfamiliar, uh, into the page is, uh, is uh, symbolized by this and out of the page is symbolized by this. So let's just assume that the uh, B field is coming out of the page. Um, if you have read up about the right hand slap rule, you'll be able to use that and apply that um, using the particle direction and the direction of the magnetic field to realize that the B force goes towards the left of the page. Um, so that's sort of how a, a perpendicular B field will result in a B force that is going towards the left of the page. And since we have a E field that's going to the right and a B field that's going to the left, um, they'll cancel out and lead to this undeflected particle. So having answered question 40, uh, question 41 is pretty simple. Um, so the particular arrangement of electric and magnetic fields in the region between plates M and N is designed to. Um, in this case, C is the correct answer. So the plates are designed to ensure that the ions passing through S have the same velocity. Um, and that's because in the previous question, when we made that uh, formula, uh, sorry, that equation, um, Fe is equal to Fb, uh, that is the uh, electric force is equal to the um, magnetic field force. Um, we found that V is always equal to E on B1. And these two numbers, E on E and B1, are going to be constant the whole time. So therefore, V is going to be constant. So therefore, um, all the ions in uh, passing through uh, the plate and therefore S3 are going to have the same constant velocity. So C is the correct answer. All right, so question 42, it's a pretty hard question. Um, you've got to know a couple of things beforehand. First off, uh, you've got to understand a little bit about centripetal um, motion, centripetal forces, circular motion, etc. Um, you've also got to know a bit about um, magnetic fields and the force that exerts and in particular the right hand slap rule. All right, so let's get started. So basically um, in question 42, we're asked for the speed of an ion of mass M just before it strikes the photographic plate. Um, the the uh, area in which we're talking about is now the area past S3. And um, if you read the stem, you'll know that that area only has one um, field in it, and that is a magnetic field, B2. Um, again, this magnetic field is perpendicular to the uh, to the plane represented by the diagram. Um, we also know that once the particle passes through S3, it's curving around and hitting the wall. So it's making this sort of circular shape. Um, so sort of, uh, first off, why does it make this shape? So the only thing that's affecting it is this magnetic field. Um, if you're familiar again with your right hand slap rule, you'll be able to predict the sort of direction in which this particle goes. So um, the right hand slap rule predicts that if the particle is moving um, in one direction, let's say down, um, and the magnetic field is coming out of the page, then um, using the right hand slap rule, you can predict that the B force will be towards the left of the page. And this is important because the B force is always um, in a perpendicular direction towards the uh, direction to the sorry direction of the particle and what's another type of force that only ever acts in a perpendicular direction relative to the motion of the particle that is the centripetal force so the centripetal force always acts perpendicular to the direction of motion um, so what this essentially means is that um, in this uh, exact scenario the magnetic field force is acting as a um, is acting as a centripetal force. It is moving the particle in a way that is 
circular. Um, so because of that, you can say that FC, the centripetal force, is equal to FB, the magnetic field force. So um, again, this is something that you just have to know off the top of your head. You have to know the um, uh, centripetal force formula. So mv squared on r is equal to qvb from the stem. Um, and you just sort of work it out from here. So you get mv is equal to qbr, v is equal to qbr on m. So, <clears throat> um, so that means that uh, a in this instance is the correct answer. So finally, question 43. Um, if the mass to charge ratios of negatively charged ions were determined by the apparatus, it would be simplest to reverse the direction of. All right, so basically, instead of having um, positively charged ions flowing through um, our apparatus, we have negatively charged ions. So how, how does this sort of change up um, the direction of our particle? So uh, the first sort of area where it might affect is between the plates. Um, so if we have a negatively charged particle, so instead of positive, it was negative, then we'd experience a left side of force, right, due to the E field. And conversely, if we had a negatively charged particle, we'd experience a right side of force due to the magnetic field. So um, as you can see, um, the uh, electric field and magnetic field between the plates still cancel out. So nothing is um, functionally sort of affected. So um, we don't need to sort of uh, change either the E field or the B1 field. Um, the B2 field, however, we do need to change um, because if if uh, this is a negatively charged particle, instead of going curving around to the left, our negatively charged particle is going to curve around to the right due to this B field. So we actually need to change the direction of the B field, um, the, the B2 field, sorry, um, to match this, um, to, sorry, to cancel out this new um, charge. Um, so in all in all, um, we only need to reverse the direction of the B2 field to ensure that the uh, charged particle still hits the photographic plate um, on the left-hand side. So uh, B is the correct answer for question 43.